Um, so summer orientation this year, I think is going to start on June 27th, if that's the Wednesday. It's always the Wednesday before the 4th of July. So it's that last Wednesday. You're, there's usually one day of university orientation, then two days of AUSL orientation. So it goes Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You have the weekend off. You'll have a day or two of class. You'll be a 4th of July off. And then you go to the, the Friday of the last week of or the first week of August. So I think this year it's August 8th. I might be wrong. They're the presidents. Um, university commitment. Classes are Monday through Fridays, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. in that window somewhere. Might be a little bit later start in some campuses on some days. Get out at 3 on some days. But you should you should have in your head, I'm 8 to 4.30. And the teacher move sessions is what I was talking about earlier. That, so these are coursework with the university. These are sessions run by AUSL where we teach you introductory teacher stuff so that when you hit your classroom on day one, you know how to, how to use strong voice. You know how to use 100%. You know about your teacher persona. So it's just that kind of practice that we do so that you feel ready when you when you start the classroom. August to November, that's the start, right? And these guys are just wrapping that up right now, right? Um, you get to know students. You get to know your school community. Kind of get to know the day-to-day -day rhythms of a classroom. You take a little uh, fall one-day takeover and then a winter couple days. I think it's, what, four days, you guys? Is that how long you go? For a week? Yeah. Um, to do your takeover stuff. That's, that's starting off the year. And, and we don't really do like, um, what's the word, official assessments of you until near the end of that, right? So you get some time to get your feet under you, start to get ready. November to December, you do your four-day winter lead teach. Um, you do your takeover where it's just you all day by yourself. Um, and then you get prepared for your big switch where you're going to move to your different site. And we talked a little bit about this on why we do it. So the big switch is a way for you to diversify your network experience, essentially. That's, that's the root cause. Um, and we think that it's a helpful way for you to get to know more about the buildings in the network, to get to know about, more about yourself as a teacher, and to ro more fully round out your skill set as a teacher. Um, yeah, so Jensi said it nicer with double your resident's pedagogical repertoire. <laughs> I'm not even sure how you say that. Did I get it right? I think I did. Um, and then provide mentor and resident uh, access and exposure to network staff, personnel, and stakeholders, facilitate opportunities for residents to work across various sites, I'm sure it's supposed to say right there. Um, but again, the, the big thing is this. It's, and, and you guys jump in on this part if you want. I think at the beginning of the year, you get in a classroom, you just love your kids, you love your resident, you love your mentor, you love all of it because it's new and it's, it's exciting. Um, but because you like it, you're not seeing what you're not getting yet. Because you just feel like you're getting so much. you know, And, and the learning is so fast and so furious and so rich and so deep that you really have to take a second to step back and say like, okay, great, I'm really good at literacy, but I don't know anything about math, right? And I certainly, we've never touched social science and, and science, right? So I, I really have some blind spots in my ability to be a good teacher that I don't necessarily see because I'm just so happy where I am. The big switch is designed to make you better. You know, so, and that's, that's really the reasoning and the foundation of it. Richer experience, newer people, you, as part of a process that you'll talk about at the university um, called EdTPA, which is your end of program assessment, one, the task one is all about identifying the demographics and the type of building that you're in your school community. What are the resources? What are the ways that you can use the community as a resource in your classroom? Um, those things are important skill sets to have that you won't apply unless you have something like the big switch to come in so that you have to use that, that set of skills. Um, as we talk about the two-day PDs, we have things called... Um, Professional learning days. And as we get into the example of the matrix, you'll see kind of how your learning is laid out for the whole year. Um, so this two-day PD at LU, you guys got, you want to speak to that when you guys come out? The yeah. Resident? So, um, so just, just the artifacts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like what we're doing a lot at that point, so uh, we have our lead teach at the top, which is like we're teaching on our own for a week. Um, and then... Uh, cycle three scorecard and tripod are basically like our evaluations from that uh, that week that four day period. Yeah. Um, Just jumping so, on one thing. Yeah, this cycle scorecard comes from your mentor. Tripod comes from your kids. Yeah. So yeah, you get like sort of those different points of assessment. What your mentor is thinking of your practice and what your students, because what they think they're great judges of you know, what they're being taught. And so you're bringing all of that information along with other videos, um, lesson plans, uh, anchor charts, classroom projects, small group videos, 
um, all of those are different artifacts that you're bringing with you uh, towards the resident showcase where you are essentially passing off your class and your learning to the residents who will be in your classroom after the big switch. That's right, because that's a big concern, right, is I got to learn my kids, and now I gotta go learn a whole nother set of kids, and some strangers coming in and teaching my kids, right? So I want the best for them as we move forward. The same way we kind of did a scaffolded um, uh, gradual release takeovers of teaching in your first experience, you'll do the same thing in your second experience. So as you roll in in January, I have a little bit of time to meet the kids, meet the other, uh, if you have a new resident, a new resident. If you have to, you know, sort of get your feet under you content-wise because you hadn't previously been teaching math, and now you got to remember like what a, uh, I don't even know, a polynomial is, right? <laughs> um, so sometimes you've got you've got some work on your own to do just to be able to to get your feet wet. Uh, but then that all sort of culminates in a, a late January, early February one-day takeover at your new site where you'll start doing stuff, and then in March and April. This is a thing that you're going to hear from day one till the end of the program, essentially. Um, it's five simple letters, EDTPA. The EDTPA is um, ultimately the bane of your existence and the best thing that you can do, right? As a, a university professor in, in education, I think the EDTPA actually is a terrific assessment of if you know how to teach. And what the EDTPA is, um, it's, it's a multi-day video um, with reflection and lesson planning and demographic work, um, where you're gonna teach a chunk of content to a student or students, depending on requirements for your EdTPA, and then you're gonna reflect on it, you're gonna give some assessment, and then you're gonna give a little plan for improvement for your kids. You're gonna bundle that all up, and you mail it off to Pearson. But it is a really good assessment in terms of your skills. It's just something we build for all year. But you guys, you can come in and sit down. Um, so NTPA is, is stressful, but you are given so, so, so many uh, conversations and directions and um, stopping points and we give writing days and university days so that you'll have time out to go take care of your NTPA work. Um, could we go back just one, I forgot what the second part was on that. Oh, and, and it's hiring season. So um, generally around the end of March, early April, you'll start working on your resume, your pitch for principals, um, getting together your portfolio, and the materials that we'll have, when, and then the first week or second week in May, we have our selection day, we call it. Um, a lot of stuff goes into selection day. It's also, sort of, it's not, I don't wanna say stressful, but it's it's definitely, I mean, for you guys, you guys can talk about it all you want, but to me, it's not stressful at all. It's a Saturday morning, it's no big deal. Sometimes I go, sometimes I don't, depends. Um, no, but hiring season, yeah, obviously is, is why you're here, right? It's what it's what we're we're training for for the whole year long. The CTR season, you know, the people who run the program, for us it's the Super Bowl, where it's like, did everybody get picked in place? Awesome, and we then we had a great year, right? The process itself is different for everybody. Um, essentially, though, there'll be a Saturday. You'll go and interview with three or four schools. You'll write down a list of I like this one best, this one second, this one third, this one fourth. They'll interview you. And they'll write down, we like her, him, him, her. And then we try to match you up, right? Um, sometimes there's matches that are super easy. Sometimes they're not quite as easy. So then you'll go back for a second interview or you'll get a different round of three to go and talk to. Um, but the rule of thumb is this. Nobody leaves the program without an answer, right? You've got a job. You've got a placement someplace. I think if uh, Jensi were here, she would say, we've got about a 99% uh, placement rate in public schools, and every once in a while there's some folks who'll be like, well, I'm getting married and I left, or my mom's real sick so I'm going home. So we don't have 100%, but almost everybody um, walks out with a job at the end of the year, right? And then you do your four years, and then you're fantastic, and all that stuff. Yeah, four days, so you'll have a last lead teach, you do like hiring interviews, EOI, end of year, Jensen loves the MOI, EOD, end of day, I call it the business thing. thanks. We'll zoom past that one. And then you'll be, this is our graduating class last year, right? So this will be you next year. You'll get your blue t-shirt, you'll stand out in front of, of TCA. You guys are gonna do it in a couple of weeks. It'll be awesome. 